I think we're going to move on to something completely different because we've both seen the next film and I know we both rate it very highly. Now, this is a film which had a very, very limited cinema release recently. It's just landed on Amazon Prime to rent, and that is the brilliantly quirky science fiction film Lola. The film is set in Britain during the early days of World War II. In fact, it's set in 1940 when the film starts. And Lola is an invention operated by two orphan sisters that can see transmissions from the future. Here's a clip. This is the true magic. Movies, royal weddings, a musical rebellion signals beamed around the world. Because of this pioneering work, this marks a huge turning point in the war against Nazi Germany. So this is, as Doctor Who would say, a timey wimey film like Back to the Future, but without any of the actual time traveling. And without giving any spoilers, it's really about the effects of knowing things about the future and the effect that that knowledge can have. So in that sense, it's actually a lot more like Back to the Future 2 in terms of the action of the film. Okay. And I guess what makes this a really fantastic film is how cleverly it's been done. It's been done as a uh, found footage documentary style film. So it's all in very grainy black and white and it's in an almost square screen format. And as well as the live action, which is filmed again in black and white in this format, it mixes that in with original newsreel footage. I say original newsreel footage, but the footage has actually been doctored by the special effects guys in order to add all the elements that are needed for the story. And it's done in a very clever way. It reminded me of all of those scenes in Forrest Gump where Tom Hanks has been digitally inserted into uh, things with the president and with Elvis and all of that um, sort of stuff. Film stars, uh, two pretty unknown actresses to me. Uh, I mean, they're pretty unknown, not that they're pretty and unknown, although they are pretty and they're unknown. Very pretty. But they are Emma Appleton and Stephanie Martini. And they play these two young scientists very, very well, I thought. They're two very different characters. So the one, Martha, is a kind of girl's girl and she's flirting with all the soldiers and so on. The other one, played by Stephanie Martini, is a real tomboy uh, called Thomasina, shortened to Tom. And she's a much more interesting kind of nuanced sort of character, difficult to kind of judge exactly where her sexual preferences lie, shall we say. And so there are two really interesting characters dropped into the middle of this story. It's actually directed by an Irish director called Andrew Legg that both Andy and myself were lucky enough to meet up with at a BFI event recently. And it's his first real feature film debut. He did do a feature documentary some years ago, but this is really his kind of feature film debut. And as I said, absolutely brilliant. And I think, Andy, you would agree with me in that. You are absolutely but I mean, we've gone from the worst film of the year, Love Again, to the best film of the year so far, which is Lola. It's a very disturbing film. I'm not going to give away any plot spoilers. I've seen it twice now. As you say, the performances are terrific. The way in which real people are put into situations that they were never in, as you say, Forrest Gump style, is cleverly done. It's got a great soundtrack. There's some great songs on the soundtrack. Yes, indeed. I love the way in which... The characters who are able to see into the future. One of them, as you said, the character of Martha, she falls in love with, you know, David Bowie, for example. So she's in 1940, but she's watching Bowie in in the 1970s and absolutely falls in love with his music. And in fact, the first clue that we get that something is wrong is when she can't find a transmission from the future featuring Bowie. It it is um, cleverly structured. The ending is, is really good. Yeah, I, I've not been a big fan over the years of found footage movies. I never really got the fuss over Blair Witch. Cloverfield was okay, uh, and some of the others have been okay. This is absolutely brilliant, and it, it actually warrants justification for being a found footage movie. 
you know, that there's a real reason. Yes. The story would not work otherwise. It's clever, isn't it? Because one of the problems with these types of time-related films is actually finding the hook to get yourself out of the story yeah. without either appearing ridiculous or blowing the viewers' minds yeah. with something that they can't get their minds around. And yeah. this actually was really clever, I thought, because it left enough questions around, but it didn't leave you with a thought that said, well, that's ridiculous, that would be a paradox, etc. And we do need to give a shout-out to Neil Hammond for the music and the songs that are in the film, because it really is yeah. a great accompaniment to what's happening. In, indeed, there's, there's a beautiful song in the middle, uh, yeah. sung by Martha, called Remember Tomorrow, which has got some real classic kind of divine comedy yeah. lyrics to it that I thought was just perfect and just beautiful. It'd be great if a song like that was put forward for the BAFTA or the Oscar for... Oh, it isn't the BAFTA for best song, but Oscar for best song. Yeah. Also a wonderful retelling of the yesterday style story where the two girls suddenly stand up at some 1940s concert and start belting out you've really got me by the kinks which, which do you remember the tv series bob goodnight sweetheart yes by Nicholas and... it kind of reminded me of that in a way where yes, it's, it's back probably into... a closer relation isn't it to goodnight sweetheart than it is to yesterday but that was lovely i went back and watched that scene again with the kinks song and it's just so brilliantly done and it kind of gets picked up as a World War II anthem uh, because it's, it's like nothing they've ever heard before. The other thing that's really good is that, as with the best films, it doesn't spoon feed you with what you're expected to know, as it were. You can do a, some of the kind of working out and filling in of the gaps. Yeah. So whereas Back to the Future stuff the sports almanac in your face and says, look, you've got all the answers to all of the sports things for the next 50 years, go away and make a lot of money. Here, the girls are clearly in a relatively affluent situation. And at one point, there's a bloody racehorse stood in the hall. And one of the army guys comes in and says, oh, I, I recognised you. Didn't you win 19 races straight at Cheltenham? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's just got some beautiful little quirky moments like that that I thought were yeah. just cracking. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it's out in blue in July. I just I checked, and so I've actually all pre-ordered my copy for the Blu-ray. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think there'll be some extras on the Blu-ray, which will be worth seeing. I I think they probably will. Yes, yes. This is the easiest ten out of ten for me yeah. to give for uh, any film this year, and I hardly ever give out top marks for a film but i thought this was just something special and something that amazon should be marketing the hell out of to get yeah. people to watch it at the moment it's pretty well buried in the bottom of the films section but they really should be making more of this film and i think i'd go as far to say it's already grabbed one of the high slots in my films of the year list even though the year is not halfway through yet yeah, absolutely, my film of the year, and 10 out of 10 for me as well, Bob. It's available to rent, as I say, on Amazon. Uh, it costs you £9.99 to rent at the moment, which, although worth it, <laughs> is still a little bit steep. But if in these difficult times you can't afford that, I'm sure the price will fall in a week or two when it becomes less of a new release. A mark of how good this film is, is that I watched it with the illustrious Mrs. Movie Man, who does not like science fiction films, but she was absolutely enthralled by this one, and she declared it to be a really good film. So that's Lola. If it wasn't obvious enough, dear readers slash listeners, go out and find this film and watch it. Really, absolutely. Really Let's make it a hit. So with both myself and Andy giving it a maximum 10 points, that gives Lola a massive Flickering Dream score of 10 out of 10, making it a huge... Ah!